So let's say you've done parting out your car and you need to scrap it. Well today I'm going to show you how you can cut up your car. Now we're going to start by removing all parts that are bolted onto the car such as the external body panels. So so far we've got the rear subframe as well as the entire underbody of the car stripped out and the entire interior stripped out. And with that, now the entire body in white is now free of all bolted on parts. Everything left is just the uni body itself. It's time to cut it apart. So here's an overall diagram of the uni body of the vehicle. You can see it's basically made up of smaller stamped steel sections that are welded together to form this body in white, is what we call it. It's got three main sections, of course, the front section over here, the mid section, which is the largest section that houses the passenger compartment, and then the tail section, which houses the trunk. This car is so light, I can actually lift it up. So there's no main strategy that I'm using to cut up this car, other than getting it into resizable pieces. I'm gonna first start by chopping off the top of the car here, and then the rear end, and then we'll take care of the floor pan. Then I'm gonna work my way down to chop off the front end. Well, there goes one blade. Now you can learn a lot about unibody cars when you cut them apart like this. Now the body of the vehicle are actually stamped pieces that are spot welded together in layers. So for example, if we take a cross section of this A-pillar here, you can see that there's four different pieces of stamped metal that are formed together to form this A-pillar. You have the inner section here, and then the outer section that's painted that we can see. Now the entire unibody is actually shaped for strength during a collision where it either absorbs any of that impact energy through crumple zones or it dissipates that energy around the passenger compartment basically sacrificing itself to save lives. Now the A-pillars and the windshield also act like a structural part to the unibody because it just ties both sides together. You can see the structure of the A-pillar inside of here. It's got, well, three layers of metal. Now this was really hard to get through, and that's just because the A-pillar has to support the load of the roof if the vehicle is actually flipped upside it down. Here's a look at the cross section of the B-pillar, and you can see just how many layers of steel there is that form the outside of this pillar here. There's about three layers of that inside layer being really thick, and that's just to help in a side impact collision to prevent anything from entering into the cabin area. This here is the roof. It's a very structural member of the vehicle because it has to protect the occupants inside of the vehicle from from any objects intruding inside. You can see the rails that run along the side here are made up of three layers of steel. We have the outside shell here, we have a middle reinforcement, and then we have an inside reinforcement over here. Now when cutting up a car, the best parts to cut are the thinnest single layer of materials, for example in this region over here, as opposed to cutting it along this part where the strut mount and there's very complicated geometry. You also can make use of any existing holes in the bodywork so you don't have to cut extra. Next I'm going to be cutting this quarter panel off. So I'm going to start along the trunk over here, work my way around the outside of the quarter panel, and then back around the back bumper. You always find little presents inside of these quarter panels. Now here we have the rear quarter panel. Now the thin part of it is not too structural, as it'll crumple in a collision. We have the back part here, which has this rear bar that pretty much is the back of the trunk. We've got the ledge where the trunk rides up against and the cutout here for the tail light. I'm going to slice the deck over here to get it away from the car body over here. We have the parcel shelf which is actually two layers of steel that go towards the back and have a hollow section here and here with room for the speakers in between. So to take the remaining part of the seat pillar off I'm going to be cutting along the bottom of the wheel well. So here we have the rear C-pillar assembly and quarter panel. You can see it's got a couple of layers over here. We've got the outside layer, which is purely cosmetic, and we've got a little bit of foam on the inside here. Now this gap kind of acts like a small little crumple zone. Then on the inside here, we have the heavy fetcher and a reinforcement piece over here that actually forms the structure. 
We've got the glass that mounts to the outside part over here. Of course it's reinforced around where the strut's going to mount because that takes all the rebound forces from the wheel. We have the wheelhouse itself here that's welded on as one separate piece. We have this back panel here that goes behind the rear seats. Taking another look at the outside of the quarter panel, you can see just how much space there is between the aesthetic part on the outside and the structural part on the inside. Next up I'm going to remove this back panel piece here by cutting along the back here. So with both quarter panels gone, I've got just a spare tire weld to knock out and then that'll leave me with the two frame rails that come out the back. You can see I ran into some issues with the front part of the spare tire well and that's just because there's a tubular structure underneath there where the rear subframe mounts. Next up I'm going to be chopping through this tube section over here above the rear subframe. Now over on this side I'm just going to continue the cut down the other side of the tube. So here we have the rear trunk part where you have the tube that continues up along from the rear subframe which mounts to this bolt here and the spring seat and it goes all the way along here to the rear where the rebar would mount to. You can see there's actually a built-in kind of crumple zone over here where we have these divots that'll crumple up in a rear end collision and we've got of course these brackets here for the EVAP system and the wheelhouse on the inside here. And there we have the vehicle with no trunk. The next step is to cut this part over here on top of where the gas tank used to be. So I'm going to be cutting through the rocker panels over here. As you can see it's made of multiple layers with the sawzall and then the rest of it can be handled with the angle grinder. Look at all that rust. This here is where the rear seat would mount and the rear wheelhouse. You can see all over the body we have this sound deadening material here and that's just to stop a lot of road noise and any unwanted sounds from entering the cabin. We've also got body sealer along a lot of the edges here and again that's just to keep everything watertight and airtight. Now on the bottom of the quarter here you can see where the frame rail from the side sills actually goes around the wheelhouse and leads towards the trunk. We've got a mount here for the rear subframe. We've got the wheelhouse here which has undercoating to prevent rock chips. Although this is galvanized steel we still have a rusting issue on the bottom here and we have the tube that goes along here and continues out to the trunk. Next up I'm going to tackle the floorboard. Next up I'm going to be taking the front seat floor plan over here. So here we have all the individual small pieces that actually get welded together to form the underbody of the vehicle. These darker pieces here have been treated for corrosion protection, whereas these hatched areas that form the front of the vehicle are actually made of high strength steel because they need to support the weight of the engine and of course absorb any crash energy. So here we have the floor pan removed. This here is a reinforcement piece that was really hard to cut through and it runs along the length of the floorboard to support the middle of it. Over here we have the side sills and it's made of three pieces, the inside, the middle and the outside piece that forms the body and the outside. And then inside here we have this support structure that's welded every couple of inches. Now this thing is still strong but it's hollow to allow a little bit of a crush zone in a side impact collision. And inside of here you can see the nuts that are welded to the sheet metal and that allows the transmission mount to be mounted underneath there. And you have this other top piece here that acts as a reinforcement and a cover for those nuts. So here we have the floor pan. We've got this back plate here that mounts up against the gas tank. There's also this flat panel here which forms the floor. We've got a drive shaft hump over here. And then of course you have the structural part which is the side sills here. Except this one's not very structural anymore because it's made of pretty much rust. And that's just due to a lot of moisture from the wheel itself sitting inside of here. And the inside starts to rust out whereas the outside looks fairly okay. And you won't notice until rust starts poking through or you get into a collision and you crumble into a pile of rust. On the top of the floor pan here we have these reinforcements that go along the middle of the floor pan where the chairs mount to but it also gives some rigidity to an otherwise flat floor pan so it doesn't crumple when you put your fat friend to sit in the back seat. Now lastly I'm going to be cutting this firewall in half. So here we have half of the front clip removed from the vehicle. Up at the front here we have the reinforcement member where it attaches to the front bumper and rebar. Inside of here we have the strut tower followed by the wheelhouse on the inside there. On the outside we have your fender apron and the hood ledge at the top and all of this connects to the firewall over here. Now much of the front end of the vehicle is actually a bunch of smaller stamped steel pieces that are welded together to create a structure 
to give the vehicle strength but also to allow it to collapse in a front end collision. Now the stamp pieces are usually held together using a MIG plug weld that go all the way around. So for example the outside of this fender apron here is one piece of stamped steel and then on the inside here and here we have another piece of steel and that spot welded along the bottom here that gives the member overall good strength but it's also hollow so it's fairly lightweight. Now a lot of the features here look very arbitrary in this front side member but these little divots here are actually points where the manufacturer has determined that it can control the deformation during a collision so the metal will actually fold along this line here and this will be the sacrificial material instead of taking the collision forces back up towards the cabin. Now the body itself actually features small little divots and holes where you can take measurements from to make sure everything is straight when repairing from a collision. Now I did try to cut through this strut tower over here and it was really really difficult and that's because it's made of a really high strength steel especially in this area around the strut tower and where the engine cradle mounts to it has to be really strong in order to support the weight of the vehicle and the engine. So I've opened up the front supporting beam here so we could have a closer look. Inside of here we have the C channel here that runs along the length of the beam and we've also got this top lid that's welded over. But what's interesting is inside we have these plates here that are welded every couple of inches along the length of the beam and that allows a little bit of space for deformation in a collision but also gives the beam a lot of rigidity. And this is one of the disadvantages of a unibody. You've got rust that can spread really quickly on very structural members such as the front of this firewall here and that's just typically because of moisture building up in an area or someone didn't wash the vehicle during winter when there was salt on it. A high strength steel is the most common type of metal used in automotive bodies in this case it's SP 130 and it goes through the process of galvanizing which is basically galvanizing a steel sheet which deposits a layer of zinc on the top and then re-annealing it so that zinc and iron kind of fuse together and form its own layer on the top and the bottom. It's then sent through the phosphating treatment and then primer before being painted. So here we are at the base of the windshield. We have the firewall which is meant to protect from any engine dangers such as fires from entering into the cabin. You can see it's not just a flat wall that it's very corrugated and it's got a lot of these stamped features in it and that's just to give it strength. Now if you're ever wondering what the underside of your vehicle looks like I flipped all the parts. Here's a closer look starting with the spare tire well over here, the evap canister that sits over there and the muffler on this side followed by the rear suspension cross member which sits over here and we've got the gas tank which sits above the rear seat followed by the floor pan over here. There's a dedicated transmission tunnel inside of here for the drive shaft and we've got the firewall up at the front here we have the strut tower over here where the suspension mounts to. We've got the front member here where the rebar mounts to. We've got the cross brace here that would mount up the engine and then of course the engine bay. And that's pretty much a little bit about how unibodies work and how to cut up your car for scrap. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Oh yeah, it actually took about six cutoff wheels and three sawzall blades to get through all of this.